let's talk a little bit about computational properties of implications. On the one hand, implications are really easy to deal with. If we have a set of implications L, canonical basis or whatever, and we want to check whether um, X implies Y follows from L, that's easy to do. We just have to check if Y is a subset of L of X. So we have to compute the closure of X on the implications L and check if Y is a subset of what we got. And this can be done in polynomial time, it can even be done with in linear time if we use lin closure. So, if we have the canonical basis, then we can very easily and very quickly, or relatively quickly, um, answer um, queries like this. Queries about concrete particular implications. However, how long does it take to compute L? If, say, we start with a formal context. We've just seen an algorithm that does precisely this. But this algorithm has to compute not only pseudo closed sets, which are premises of the canonical basis, but also all the closed sets. So it computes pre-closed sets, which include all the closed sets. And there may be an exponential number of closed sets. And we don't need any of them. We just want to see the basis. We just need pseudo closed sets. And still we have to compute them. So we, we spend exponential time on things we don't need. That's not good. Well, okay, that's, that's a property of this particular algorithm. There are other algorithms that may use different strategies. Um, they don't have to compute closed sets. Such algorithms are faster than the algorithm we started in some cases and they're slower in other cases. But can we hope to have an algorithm that works in polynomial time? So an algorithm that takes a formal context and uh, spends only polynomial time in the size of this formal context to produce its implication basis, its canonical basis. Well, it turns out that this is impossible and for a very simple reason. The canonical basis itself, although it's the smallest possible basis, it can still be large. It can be even exponential in the size of the formal context. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's take uh, a formal context uh, that has uh, attribute m0, m1, and so on up to mn, and then it also has a uh, n more attributes, m n plus 1, and so on, m to n. Okay, so it has a 2n plus 1 attribute. And uh, the objects are split into two parts. Uh, first of all, we have n objects, g1, gn, and uh, neither of them has attribute m0. As for these attributes, the situation is like this. Um, I'll denote it uh, like this, what it means. Um, imagine, so G1, Gn, and M1, Mn is a table of size n by n. So imagine that it's filled with ones, with crosses, except for the diagonal. So, we put a cross between gi and mj, if and only if i isn't equal to j. That's why I use this sign, not equal to. But graphically this means that uh, this diagonal is filled with zeros, or it's just empty, and the rest is filled with crosses. And we have the same situation here. So that's the first part of our objects. And then we have a, a two n more objects. So g n plus one and so on up to g three n. And all these objects have attribute m zero. And 
they don't really make distinction between these two parts of attributes. So here we have a table of size 2n by 2n. And again, we leave the diagonal empty and the rest is filled with crosses. So that's our formal context. Um, now, if you think of it, and if you try to compute its pseudo-closed attribute sets, its pseudo-intents, then it's not too difficult to see that pseudo-intents are precisely sets of size m that look like this. m i 1 M-I-N, so they are of size N, and for, for a position number J in this set, we take either an attribute number J from this part, or an attribute N plus J from this part. So here, um, I-J is either J, or j plus n. Well, if you look at any such set, this set um, cannot be a subset of any object intent from the first part of our formal context. So it belongs only to objects from the second part. And this set, and therefore this set is not closed, it implies m0. All objects from the second part have m0. How many such sets do we have? Well, n positions, and we have two options for each position. So, 2 to the n possible pseudo-intents. Well, not possible, 2 to the n pseudo-intents. That's the size of our implication basis. But the size of the context is just 3n by 2n plus 1. So you can see that the size of the basis is exponential in the size of the context. Well, this means that it's completely impossible to have a polynomial time algorithm that enumerates the canonical basis of a formal context in general. Well, however, uh, we may require something weaker. Uh, we may want to have an algorithm that enumerates pseudo intents in time polynomial not only in the context size, but also in the size of the basis. Polynomial in the number of student intents. An output polynomial alg algorithm. Well, it's a major open question whether such polynom output polynomial time algorithm exists. The algorithm from the previous video doesn't have this property because it has to go through all intents in addition to all pseudo intents. And, uh, well, the number of intents can be much, much larger than the number of pseudo intents in some cases. So, it's a big question whether or not we can compute the canonical basis in time polynomial in the size of the basis and the size of the input context.